UNICEF Executive Director Anthony Lake visited the Government of Ethiopia's flagship health extension program in Amara region during his recent visit to Ethiopia. The health extension program is an equity-based strategy designed to provide integrated health, nutrition and sanitation services to underserved communities throughout the country. Launched in 2004, the Health Extension Program has since trained over 34,000 health extension workers and placed two in each village health post throughout the country. These frontline health workers provide a package of preventative health, nutrition, hygiene and sanitation services and some curative services, including malaria testing and treatment, and recently, following UNICEF discussions with government, pneumonia testing and treatment. Child survival rates have improved significantly in Ethiopia thanks in part to the work being done by health extension workers and the community health workers that assist them. In 1990, more than 20% of children in Ethiopia would not survive to reach their fifth birthday. Today, that figure has been cut by at least half. The preventative health care intervention made available at village health posts like Yisak Deber are ensuring that these child survival gains are sustained and improved upon. Among the services provided by the Yisak Deber Health Extension workers is to check children for pneumonia, one of the major causes of under five deaths in Ethiopia, by counting the number of breaths per minute. Should their findings indicate pneumonia, they'll be able to provide antibiotics to treat the life-threatening illness which causes approximately 12% of under five child deaths in Ethiopia. They also have rapid diagnostic kits to test for malaria, which accounts for 7% of under five deaths in Ethiopia and have drugs available for treatment. Diarrheal diseases are responsible for 22% of under five deaths, and the health posts are equipped with oral rehydration salts for treatment. It's a Tuesday morning, and women and children have gathered at the Yisak Deber health post in Wagara district, Gondar, for the weekly outpatient therapeutic feeding program. Health extension workers measure the mid-upper arm circumference of the malnourished children, a reliable indicator of malnutrition, and weigh them before giving them weekly supplies of ready-to-use therapeutic foods, which are supplied by UNICEF. UNICEF is working with the government of Ethiopia to provide in-service training for health extension workers to enable them to respond to the major childhood killers that are largely preventable. Malnutrition is an underlying factor in approximately half of all under-five child deaths. The rollout of the UNICEF-supported outpatient therapeutic and community-based nutrition program is enabling the timely identification and treatment of severe acute malnutrition at the health post level. Health extension workers in over 7,600 sites have been trained to screen for malnutrition and treat those children who do not have medical complications like fever or diarrhea with ready-to-use therapeutic foods. UNICEF has also successfully advocated the inclusion of pneumonia detection and treatment at the health post level and the health extension workers in Isak Deber have received the UNICEF-supported training and medicines to treat the killer disease. Mr. Lake, accompanied by the Vice President of Amara Region, Ato Ahmed Abato, joined villagers from Isak Deber for their monthly community conversation as part of the UNICEF-supported Community-Based Nutrition Program, or CBN. The discussion is led by one of the community health workers who support the health extension workers in Yisak Deber. The discussion begins with a review of the profile of the village and the latest findings from the growth monitoring sessions where the community health workers canvass the village and screen children two years of age or under for malnutrition using mid-upper arm circumference measurements. Growth monitoring records are kept for all the children and those who are severely malnourished are referred to the health post for the outpatient therapeutic feeding program. There are five severely malnourished children in the village and the discussion tries to identify why. This is a huge improvement since the year before when there were 31 severely malnourished children in the village. While good harvests have contributed to this improvement, Health workers also believe that the community discussions and resulting improvements in feeding practices, the construction of latrines and promotion of hand-washing practices have also contributed to the decline. During this discussion, poor sanitation and inappropriate feeding practices are among the possible causes for malnutrition identified by the group. The group then decides to discuss the issue of sanitation further and come up with a plan of action to respond to the problem. I had not expected to be able to see so much community involvement uh, and the way in which 
some families then are benefiting and then the other families see and then the others see and then to see them all meeting uh, in a community uh, setting uh, and all of them discussing uh, what to do, hand washing, better sanitation, uh, going to the uh, outpost when they needed to, uh, all of that, and to see then, above all, the healthy children as a result of this uh, has been wonderful. Piloted in 2008 in drought-prone and food insecure districts, CBN is designed to prevent child malnutrition. Preventing malnutrition before it becomes severe and life-threatening is the cornerstone of the national nutrition strategy of the country. CBN has now been scaled up and adopted as a national strategy. Following the community conversation, Mr. Lake visited the home of one of the participants, Ababa Yigzao, where they discussed the benefits of the health extension program. Simple interventions like latrine construction and hand washing with soap or ash can go a long way in improving child survival in a country like Ethiopia where a large portion of the disease burden results from poor hygiene and sanitation. Ababa has six children. Her youngest son is 16 months old. Ababa gave birth to five of her children at home, but her last child she gave birth to at the village health post. Ababa is among the model families in Isak Deber, having completed all the health, nutrition, sanitation and hygiene packages that are provided at the health post. As such, she's an example for others in the community. Her example will encourage other women in the village to not only seek antenatal care, but to make the break with tradition and give birth at the health post or other health facility. Less than 10% of mothers in Ethiopia give birth in a health facility, a factor that contributes to the high number of neonatal deaths, 38% of under five deaths. UNICEF has supported the provision of essential supplies for the health posts, including birthing kits and delivery beds, and supports training for health workers and traditional birth attendants on safe delivery. This is the equity strategy. Uh, the whole point of it is based on the thought that it is in the communities that are at greatest need that we can make the biggest difference. And therefore, it is not only the right thing to do to work in these communities, but it is the most effective thing as well. And I have seen it with my eyes over and over again uh, in the uh, education where children are teaching children in a very cost-effective way, here where uh, two health extension workers are able to make a huge difference uh, in the community, which could not be possible if they were required to go all the way uh, to travel kilometers and kilometers uh, to get to health care. So this is an affirmation that this strategy, again, is not only serving the rights of children, but it is doing it in a very practical and cost-effective way. Uh, and I am very, very encouraged by what I have seen. And it is due to our partners uh, in the government uh, and uh, all of the local workers and especially the people in the community who so embrace this and then shape their own lives.